Hey guys, this is Toby Mathis. Today we're gonna to talk about hiding your real estate. And I don't mean like hiding it away like in a, in a coffee can in the backyard. Now you can't do that with real estate because it's gonna be deeded, right? But what it is, is it's understanding how the legal system works and what people are gonna be targeting and how to make the smallest possible target appear on you. Because believe it or not, there's people out there that are gonna to try to take your stuff, especially if they realize that you have wealth. It's just a fact of life. There's lawyers out there that represent clients that want to take your stuff. The lawyer, the lawyer wants to get paid. The lawyer wants to get a percentage. The clients want to get something. It might be a tenant who's mad because you're evicting them because they haven't paid you any rent. And so as a parting shop, they said, hey, there's toxic mold, or there's somebody that fell down your stairs or at a party and somebody gets injured. The next thing you know, you're getting sued in your crossways uh, with your tenants, or any, it could be contractors. It could be any number of things that pop up and cause you to be in a place of being a defendant. So what we wanna do is make sure that we don't have things that you cannot avoid. Like if you own real estate, there's just risk that comes with it. What we wanna do is make it as small a target as possible. And one of the best things we've realized that there is, is making it look like you don't own a bunch of real estate. And so immediately people say, well, there's no way to do that because there's a public record, right? Hey, I have a mortgage on a property. People are always gonna see it. Well, actually, there's a way to get your name out of the public record, period, with real estate. You might have a residual track, you know, like, hey, I owned it at one point in time, and maybe they, they dig that deep, but my experience is that they don't dig that deep. If somebody really wants to pin their ears back and come after you, yes, there's things that you can do to try to, uh, to, try to minimize that, but you can't stop somebody from just doing that. What you can do is remove the incentive for anybody to ever do that, and that's because when somebody goes in and does an asset search for you, if they don't see you owning a whole bunch of assets that are in your name, chances are they're gonna pass you for somebody who's lower lying fruit. Let me just kind of explain this uh, because we've actually seen this work. So we have a situation where there's two family members. I won't tell you too much of the facts because you'd be able to figure this one out as to who it was, but there was two family members that owned a building. And I won't say where it was, but there was a building and there was a horrible accident that caused exposure. And the insurance company did what a lot of insurance companies do, and they denied some of the responsibility because there was a third party that caused the harm on that property. So you had two property owners, the exact same property, exact same claim. One was our client already, and they were given an option to settle out at a very small amount very early on. The, un the other individual who was not our client is, ended up in a five-year legal drama that ended up with significant exposure, millions of dollars. Now, here's the difference between them. Our client, all we did is move the properties that were in his name into a, a situation where people could not see those properties anymore. And we use what's called a land trust Sometimes you're using an LLC. Sometimes you're using something called a Wyoming Statutory Trust, depending on where the property is located. You're generally using one of those three instruments, and I'll explain them in a second. Usually in combination, because we want to make sure that we have asset protection and we want to get your name out of the public record. So in this particular situation, all we did is move his properties that he had had in his name into a structure where nobody could see that they were his properties anymore. And voila, he got out for what was tens of thousands of dollars. All this was is, you'll hear my partner Clint Coons, who has a great channel, by the way, sometimes call it smoke and mirrors. Sometimes what you're doing is just removing the, the, the target. Like, hey, there's, like, maybe we're getting the equity out of a property, or maybe we're getting your name off of a property. And that by itself works about 95, 90 to 99 percent of the time but you still wanna have the protection as well, and that's using something like an LLC, right? So we may have a property, let me give you an example. I might have a single family residence that I put into a land trust, because there's debt on it. Let's say that we're in Florida, and we use a land trust. Land trusts in Florida actually have asset protection as well. But let's just say that we put it into the land trust because we don't want dock stamp fees or anything like that, and there's a mortgage on it. So we move it, and boom, boom your name is no longer on title in the public record. So if somebody searches, they're not gonna see that that is your property in your name. 
But we're not going to stop there. We take the beneficial interest of that LLC or of that uh, land trust, and a land trust really simply is somebody who gives something, something, somebody who manages it for the trust, that's called a trustee, for the benefit of a beneficiary. And the beneficiary has all the rights to the income and occupancy. So we're breaking the property into three pieces, the person that gives it, the person that holds it in their name on behalf of the trust, that's called a trustee, and the beneficial interest. So we take the beneficial interest and we move it into an LLC, which gives it a ton of asset protection. The trustee, we like to use anonymous companies in, out of jurisdictions like Wyoming. Or you can use uh, an attorney or a trusted advisor or something like that. The most important thing is that your name is not on a public record. You can literally do this in every jurisdiction. If somebody says, no, you can't. I know that Arizona is different. No, there's a way to do it. Well, what about this place? No. Hey, there's only 14 states that even have statutes. Uh, every state has common law. Every state allows trusts. You can, it's a contract. That's all it is. So, you know, where do they come from? If you want to get technical, when Sears Tower was being built, uh, there's something called an Illinois-style uh, land trust. There was land trust. It was actually approved through a court proceeding. So you can actually see these things and how they're broken down. All it was was people were buying property in different names with the beneficiary being this organization. So the, the reason that they did is they didn't want everybody to know that they were accumulating this, this land because the, the people would have held out and charged a heck of a lot more because they would have said, ah, oh, these guys need all of these properties, otherwise the project's not going to go forward. So they just had different names going in and buying in these different trusts, but the beneficiary was all the same. That's all you're doing. It, it, it is, is taking the property out of your name and putting it in the name of a trustee on, or in a trust. So it would be like this. So if it was me individually, it would be Toby Mathis as trustee of whatever I want to name the, the, the land trust. You could call it the green trust, the blue trust, whatever. You can pick whatever you want and then use the date for identification purposes. So the uh, Toby Mathis trustee of the blue trust dated, you know, June 1st, 2020 something, right, right? Whatever it is, like you're, that can actually be the name. That's what's untitled. Now you say, Toby, you, don't, you just said you, you, that I didn't want my name on it. Okay, then we'll use an LLC and we'll use one that's anonymous, like Wyoming. So it might be the 123 LLC trustee of the blue trust dated such and such. Your name's nowhere to be found. That is how you hide real estate. And we're not like, hey, you can't see my real estate anymore. What we're trying to do is make it so that it's not easy for somebody to see that you own a large portfolio of real estate. And we've seen it work over and over again over the last 25 years uh, because our clients rarely get sued. We've never had a more stark example of what happens uh, as the example where there was two individuals sued that, that owned the property together. And you saw how the, the difference in the way that they were treated. From a, from a legal standpoint, but we see it repeatedly with our clientele when somebody does have a liability occurrence, that it doesn't escalate into somebody trying to take anything else. Because there's, there's two things. You actually have asset protection by using the LLCs. You actually have asset protection with the structure. But the thing that makes the, the target get really small is when they can't find your stuff. And you know, if you want proof in the pudding, figure out how many homeless people get sued every year, right? They're not going to sue them because they don't, they're not going to get anything out of it. And the same thing is true of you. If, if they can't see you own a bunch of assets, say you own 10 pieces of real estate in an area and a tenant is thinking about, you know, trying to get a lawyer, they're fishing around because they want to take a piece out of you because they're mad at you for something. Maybe you evicted them because they trashed your place and the, they want a parting shot and they're looking for some some bottom dwelling lawyer to come after you that will take it on a contingency. The lawyer is going to at least look at it and say, hey, you know what, there's really no recovery here. Uh, I don't see a bunch of uh, properties or, hey, there's this one, they only own this one property. They, they don't even have a lot of equity in it. Oh, shoot, there's nothing for us to get. May, maybe we could send a nasty gram out a letter or something. Maybe we could try to shake them for a little bit of their insurance, but, but realistically, they're going to pass. And so you never even knew that happened. And all you did is you avoided having that, uh, being molested by that lawsuit. That's it. How to hide your real estate. It's actually very, very simple. It's get it out of your name into a trust 
Uh, sometimes you could do this with an LLC. Uh, there are ways to do it with anonymous ownership through an LLC. My personal preference, though, is that we use uh, uh, that we use trusts if there's debt. We can use the LLC if it's cash, and we might use a series LLC. We might use individual LLCs, but at the end of the day, what we're doing is isolating our liability and making the target on us extremely small because people don't realize we are involved in that real estate. And then for you naysayers who say, no, there's a possibility that they'll be able to see the mortgage. Yeah, if you really wanna dig that deep, but it's expensive. And most of the time, like our experience is that it's rare that somebody decides to make that big of an investment when the outcome is uncertain. If you have absolutely scorched earth, they might be able to find your stuff, but for the most part, we've seen this with tens of thousands of people. It doesn't get that. We just avoid the whole thing by keeping that target on you super small by hiding your real estate, by keeping your name off it and putting it into a trust or into an entity so that your name's not in that public record. Hey, if you like these types of videos, please subscribe, please click that little bell so that uh, you're notified when new videos come out. And if you think there's anybody that could benefit from this type of information, please share it.